Hi everyone, my name is Alex and today I will be presenting the first of my Peak Microcontroller tutorials which will be the GPIO peripheral which is the simplest of all or general purpose input output peripheral okay so what this is is just a bunch of pins that you have in the microcontroller which you can control either to convert them or configure them as an input or as an output okay so when you configure it as an output you can change the voltage in that pin just uh, to zero volts or to five volts depending on the power supply you're using if you're using 3.3 volts it would be 3.3 well a little less than that but you can say it's 3.3 and that means that if you have a 5 or a 3.3 output in one pin it will be it will mean a high logic level if you have a zero it will be a low logic level so if you want to flash a LED you will have to just to change the output from 5 volts to 0 volts and then 5 again, 0 volts and so on. So it's really really simple. Also you can read a logic level that comes from another uh, per, another circuit or another uh, microcontroller or whatever or a sensor or whatever. So that would mean uh, to configure the peripheral as an input or one pin as an input. You can read the uh, the voltage if it's uh, five volts. In the case that you're using five volt supply, uh, you will be reading a, a high level or a one. That would be a one in the regi register. I will talk about the register later. Anyway, I will try to keep this uh, video as simple as possible. I don't want to mess up with uh, a different stuff that doesn't. Uh, it's not important right now. So I will try to keep it simple to to be able to flash a LED and stuff like that. So uh, these are the pins that you can control from RA0 to RA7 or RV0 to RB7 in the case of this microcontroller peak. These are port A and port B in groups of 8 bits because this is a 8 bit microcontroller so you have ports of 8 bits or less if you using if you're using a 16 bit microcontroller you will have 16 bit ports and if you're using a 32 bit you will have 32 bit ports so, so it's also interesting to, that uh once you have more pins in your package if you have like uh uh, pick 16 f uh, 8077 that would be like a 40 pin microcontroller and you will have port B, port C, port D I'm not sure if you have port E, well whatever it doesn't depend, it depends on the package you're using so also you'll have to take into account that these pins are not only digital you have uh, another functions most of the time like for example this one the RA1 can be configured as an analog input. That would be if you use it, uh, if you're using it as an analog input, you cannot use it as a digital input output. Okay, so you have to take that in account. Also, if you're using this for a crystal, uh, an external uh, crystal oscillator, you cannot use it as a digital input output. So you have to choose one of the um, of the valid options you have here. Okay. Also, it's important to know that uh, these pins can be configured only as an input sometimes. Like in the case of RA5, it can only be an input. It cannot be an output. So just keep that in mind because that would be really tricky if you don't know that and you're trying to make this RA5 an output and you will not see an, an uh, output on an, a an, uh, high logic level. So just keep that in mind. It's really, really, really tricky. Or it could be really, really tricky. Also, to make sure you are using a pin that it's uh, input output, you can go here in the data sheet of the microcontroller. There is this table. It's a pin out description. It can tell you uh, what the func functions are in those pins, like uh, VRF. It's a uh, um, voltage reference for the low voltage reference for the AD converter and it can also be an analog input and stuff like that and also it says 
here uh, what kind of uh, input it is. If it's an input and, or, or input and output, or just an input, just an output, like this one, this is only an output, an input, 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 output. And if you go down here to RA5, you'll see that we have RA5 is only an input pin. It's not bidirectional like this one. So just keep that in mind because, as I said before, it's it can be really tricky. So now I'll go to page 60 where you will see something really interesting. Mm, here we have uh, the registers that are associated with port B. In this case port B, you can uh, look at uh, port A, it's basically the same thing. And um, here are some stuff that you might not need right now. I won't talk about that by for now, but later I will talk about it. And these are the two registers that we are interested on today. So first of all, we have trees B, which would be the uh, tri-state port. That that means that it can uh, set the direction of the pin. Or, or the whole port, but uh, each pin separately. So, if you'd write here, as you can see, this is these are uh, A bit registers because it's an A bit micro microcontroller. And um, if you set this to one, the bit zero, you will make in RB zero as an input. And if you set it to zero, that would be an output. Okay, so one input and zero output. Uh, you can do that for every bit and that would be uh, changing every pin to an input or an output uh, just choosing zero or one in each case. Also you'll have another port uh, I'm sorry, another register which, we, which will be port B and or port A or port C, this letter will change depending on the port you're configuring or you're changing or you're working with. So bit zero will control if this is an output. If you configure in trice or trees B, trees B um, as an output, if you configure this as an output, you will control here if you get an high logic level or a low logic level. So if you want a 5 volts or a 0 volt, if you put here a 1, one you'll have a 5 volt output or in this pin. And if you write here a 0, you'll have a 0 volt output in this pin. Okay? It's the same for every pin. You can either change the whole port at uh, one time or you can change any bit so you can control each bit separately you don't have to change all of them okay so this is basically it. you configure if it's uh, input or output and then you choose if you can uh, if you want to read or to write the port if you want to read it you just read the port and the register and the bit that you want to know what the voltage is, is if it's a 5 volts or a 0 volt, a high level or a low level. If this is a 1 when you read it, it's a high level, so you probably have uh, 4.7 or 5 volts in the input, or more than, uh, I don't know, 3 volts, it depends on the microcontroller you're using, but you basically have a high level in this pin, okay? It's as simple as that. Well, also, I would like to show you another document which is really interesting. It's um, one from Microchip. It's section 9, Input Output Ports. This is like uh, the basics of this uh, peripheral. This is a little bit of what I just said before. And um, mm, I don't know, there is something interesting here, which is uh, this. It's uh, something to help you remember when uh, a pin is an input or an output. If you configure uh, the register trace or trice or I don't know how you say it, uh, I call it trace. If if you set it as a one, if you set one bit as a one, it will look like an A and like an I. So it will be an input 
and a zero looks like an O, so it's an output. Well, it's something that might help to remember. And also, I would like to show you here the typical I/O port configuration, or this is like um, a sort of uh, a schematic that can tell you how the um, peripheral is made, like uh, how it works inside. So it might help you sometimes, like if you have an open collector input or, or output, uh, you will have a um, here you will, it will show you that it's open so you can know what the what kind of configuration you have sometimes you have protection diodes that can uh, uh, if you limit the current you can uh, set it to you can put in the input like 8 volts uh, and because of the resistor that limits the current and the diode that you'll have here that will uh, like limit the voltage in the input so you won't burn your your peak microcontroller just by using a bolt so that's uh, something that might help you sometimes so it's good to know that it exists like this one as you can see it's a little bit different and it's different for every port or sometimes it's different for different ports like this one it's a little bit different and it's really good to know that this exists because uh, it might be helpful sometime so well, this is basically it. I hope you like it and I hope to see you or in the next video. So, thanks for listening and I hope you like it. Bye.